Okay, so here we have Edmund alone on the stage in Act 1, Scene 2. Uh, he's alone speaking to the audience, making a really close connection in the soliloquy. I always spell this wrong to my embarrassment. Soliloquy is when an actor is alone on stage talking to himself, though at times, uh, especially in the modern stage, there's a sense that the actor is talking to the audience. And Edmund is a character who makes a real connection with the audience. You know, Cordelia had her sides where she has these brief moments. Edmund has a very elaborate speech where he declares a kind of inner sense of defiance. And we, the audience, who saw him kind of clench teeth uh, uh, as he heard his mom referred to as a whore and the sport of making him and all this now speaks to the audience and to nature itself. Nature, thou nature, art my goddess. I worship you, nature. I worship nature. To thy law my services are bound. So he's a servant. He's bound to nature. Why nature, I wonder? Well, he'll explain Wherefore, why, why should I stand in the plague he calls custom a plague, a disease? You know, at this time in the Jacobean era, 1605, there was a plague um, that was killing thousands of people, uh, 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 tens of thousands yearly, certainly. Um, and, uh, you know, Puritans thought certainly this was a punishment from God. The word plague is a very loaded uh, phrase. Uh, in the context of the time. Um, death was something that um, uh, the, the people in the audience were, were, were completely aware of. But that word, its power, like um, Mercutio saying a plague, not Merc yes, Mercutio, plague on both your houses, that language is something worth considering, the language of disease and how powerful and inappropriate it might be considered. Here he's calling the disease of custom. So there are rules the rules of society are a disease. And permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me for that I am some 12 or 14 moonshines lag of a brother. So because of the plague of customs, and I'm, you know, a year or so younger, I don't get any land. No inheritance of land. Um, for materialists who read the play, this isn't a play actually about nature, God, uh, love, loyalty. It's a play at its center about land, property, and wealth. Remember, uh, Lear is dividing his kingdom. It's the inheritance given to the daughters. Here, Edmund immediately is complaining that he doesn't get the inheritance because he's not the first son. Moreover, not only is he the younger, he's a bastard. Wow, it's a magnificent word, harsh word. It's lost its sting in our society, but bastard, uh, born out of wedlock. Why base? Why from the ground? Why, why, why do they call us base, like lower? Nature doesn't. And he, he's picking up his argument here because nature, his dimensions are as well compact. He's as tightly built. His mind is as generous. His, his mind, his imagination gives him as many ideas. My shape is true as honest man's issue. I have the same body shape as someone who's honest. Uh, sorry, no, as someone, uh, a woman who's honest's child. So why base? With baseness, bastardy, base, base, that repetition. Reminds me of Iago. What's he doing there with that repetition? What's he emphasizing? Um, I recommend you once again go back to Riz Ahmed uh, doing this speech on the Guardian website. Base, baseness, bastardy, base, base. Who, in the lusty stealth of nature, take more composition and fierce quality than doth within a dull, stale, tired bed go to the creating a whole tribe of fops, go tween asleep and wake. At least I was made out of lust 
and fierceness, lust, fierce energy, not dull, stale, tired, boring. No. And this creates a tribe of fops. Fops. Terribly educated, weak, um, flimsy men. I, I hear all of that in that word fops. I don't even need to look it up. Though, I would recommend you do look it up. It comes up again. Well then. Legitimate Edmund. Edgar, rather. Oh, Legitimate Edgar. Simple declaration. Played right gets a big laugh to the crowd. I must have your land. I've had it. I'm going to take it. Our father's love is to the bastard Edmund as to the legitimate. And he, he says, okay, look, he loves us the same, our father, apparently. And he gets distracted. His mind goes. And it's good because he, language, he's very suspicious of language in this uh, language as well as custom. So, base, bastardy, base, base. He's trying to figure out what does this word mean? Where is, where is the meaning within the word? And here too, legitimate. So what a great word. Okay, my legitimate. Le legitimate. That's what Riz Ahmed says. Legitimate. Well, my legitimate. If this letter speed, now here's the trick, the letter trick. He's forged a letter. And my invention, thrive, prosper, grow. If it does its business, the base from the bottom to the top. The base shall top. The base will overcome the legitimate. And then the, one of the greatest lines in all of literary history, I grow, I prosper. Now gods, stand up for bastards. It is a champion call for villainy, for villains. It's funny, it's silly, but it's creepy. I mean, I grow, I prosper, I, 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 this, it's like this, this plan is making me bigger and more powerful. And, and he calls out to the gods, now it's my turn, okay? So he calls to the gods, but I think actually he's calling out to the audience too. It's time to stand up for bastards. I think this is a declaration. This plays about bad guys, and the bad guys are going to do something. 